Right now, we're going to focus on helping you identify key individuals or companies that are traditionally the ones that learn first of a local couple's engagement. We're going to give you some very simple marketing intelligence strategies that will allow you to target couples weeks, if not months, before your competition even knows they're engaged. Your goal when you start selling to the wedding market starting tomorrow is to establish a relationship at that exact time they begin making the literally hundreds of decisions that are going to be involved in planning a wedding, booking an engagement party, making that rehearsal dinner decision, and booking the honeymoon. A recent study was conducted by the Harvard School of Business, and it states that when a need arises, if you are the very first sales professional to reach out, you've got a seven times, now let me be clear, a 700 times or 700% better chance of landing that business if you're the very first person that they reach out and speak with. Remember, brides, grooms, and their parents are not experienced at buying the products and services that you sell. That's why the relationship you build will play a very important role with these prospects. And remember, these prospects are a little different than the other markets you service. So the first question I would like you to ask yourself, and when you get to the office tomorrow, I want you to ask your coworkers, when it comes to the weddings market, are we beating our local competitors to the punch? Are we being the first company to reach out and contact them? Because if you are, you will strategically cut through all the competitive noise that is about to engulf these couples and their parents from all the other local businesses who want their weddings dollars. Now by acting first, you will make these inexperienced buyers your primary customers. They will look at you as, as an advisor, not necessarily just a vendor. This is true whether you're trying to book that engagement party or the, close the reception, you're running a venue hall, or you want to book the honeymoon. Now, I want to start off with two very important initial sales tactics. Together, they form a combination of old-fashioned, high-touch sales with cutting-edge social media marketing. But let's just review. Our goal is to focus right now on how to introduce you and your company to brides, grooms, and their parents long before the competition enters the scene. Traditionally, the jeweler is the first business person to become aware of a pending engagement. Now, how is this? Well, because the jeweler gets to know either the groom or the couple as they begin shopping for an engagement ring. Like yourself, the jeweler traditionally faces a great deal of local competition. They're trying to make a high ticket sale, one that most likely will be shopped around many times before the buying decisions made. This is also good news for you because the jeweler is a business person who needs a partner in profit. Specifically, what I mean is that you are in a strategic position to supply local jewelers with future sales leads. For example, I have a client who manages five local hotels. They each offer preferred status and special benefits to those couples who work with any of the local jewelers they have previously partnered with. Specifically, they offer a series of benefits or upgrades and services their competitors do not. They strategically position each benefit as only being available to those couples that are current clients or prospects of an endorsed jeweler. Now, the number of benefits offered is always based on the amount of revenue that each couple will book. The jeweler can tell each prospect, hey, if you buy your rings from me, engagement wedding, you can unlock an amazing array of special services and upgrades from any of these five hotels. I served as vice president of sales and marketing for Marriott's corporate lodging division. Many of our locations would quietly reward jewelers with a block of Marriott reward points for each referral that booked. The jeweler could earn a vacation or a long weekend in a very, very nice hotel or resort, and it was always based on booked and achieved business. Now, please remember that almost all the jewelers that you will be dealing with are small businesses. These are businesses that keep an eagle eye on cash flow. It's possible that the owner of your local jeweler or one or two of their individual salespeople may be attracted to earning a small sales commission based on their referrals that book. 
And in fact, it doesn't have to be a cash payment. I currently work with several restaurants, wedding venues, hotels, and resorts that establish a sales target or a minimum number of referrals that must book from a local jeweler. Now, if the jeweler or even just one of their salespeople achieves that preset target, then the company will deliver a great incentive. It's almost always what we call a trade out. A trade out is important because it will have less effect on your marketing budget. Now, let me give you an example. If a jeweler books X number of referrals, they could possibly get a, a meeting room for an annual staff banquet or a series of individual dinners just for themselves and their spouse in the dining room. Some companies offer a free meeting room to be used for a client reception or a staff meeting. And some give just a suite for the owner or the top salesperson who made the referrals. Now a simple Google search will identify all of the traditional jewelry stores located in close proximity to your business. And I'm sure you know Yelp is a very easy and effective search tool as well. But I strongly recommend that you strengthen your prospecting efforts by first conducting a search on LinkedIn. LinkedIn enjoys a very high level of participation from retail owners, managers, and their sales professionals. LinkedIn will provide you with in-depth information not only about the business, but the individuals who own it, who manage it, and who work there. I highly recommend you do not make first contact with any new jeweler without having used LinkedIn to learn three things about the owner or the manager before you call or visit. For example, how long have they owned or worked at that jewelry store? Where they used to work? Where they went to school? Any certifications or awards or membership that they are involved in? Are they active in your local chamber of commerce? This information is all contained in an average LinkedIn profile. Come to think of it, searching LinkedIn, well, it's the 21st century version of Sales Prospecting 101. Now let me give you one powerful sales tactic, and it's rarely used by your local competition. In fact, it's going to provide you with an immediate competitive advantage. I recommend you take a look at the Jewelers of America membership website. This is a professional trade association, and it's made up of over 8,000 North American jewelers. Now this website will even allow you to search their membership database and you can be as specific as by your local zip code. The site will provide you with the name and address of those local jewelers who are members plus a link to their individual local store websites. Now, one final thought on working with jewelers, like all B2B prospects, their primary interest when you approach them is going to be focused on how you can help them. Specifically, they want to know Will they sell more engagement and wedding rings because they have worked and partnered with you? They will not be focused on how many sales leads they can send you. So always position yourself as a partner in profit. You're a non-competitor. You just happen to also target the same market segment they do. When you position yourself as a partner in profit, you are going to come across as a person can, that can help them sell more jewelry. If you accomplish this, Becoming a partner with local jewelers, I promise you'll begin to receive a steady stream of leads and the revenue and net profits they generate.